morning everybody and welcome. It's good to be gathered together here today to worship God. We're going to begin by singing or just listening and thinking about the words as a call to worship. Here I am to worship. Step down into darkness, open my eyes, let me see beauty that made this heart adore you, hope of a light spin with you. Here I am to
Let's pray. Eternal God who transcends time and space, you have said that when two or three gather in your name, you will be there in the middle. You bind us together as one people, along with the cloud of witnesses. All those of the past and those we see to come through the telescope of faith, we praise you as your church, visible and invisible. O oh God, you have loved us to death and back. In Jesus, we have been given life eternal, brought into your family and made co-heirs with Christ. We come to you today to claim again your forgiveness. You'd think stuck in our houses there would be less opportunity for our foolishness, but we have brought disrepute to your name in our words, thoughts and actions. We have neglected you, forgotten that we are beloved, and taken on board the lies of the evil one. Out of the depths we cry to you, O God. Hear our voices and be with your people as we gather and worship in this time and these places. Come through your Holy Spirit, living God. Lead us to paths of steadfast love. Lead us to new life and lead us and the world to the peace which you offer. Breathe through us. Help us to hear your words and to become even more alive, filled with your spirit. And help us to look for the new, the unexpected, and to dream beyond our boundaries as we strive towards a new creation as your people. Be with us in this gathering. Renew us, fill us, and open our hearts to your presence. And as we pray, we take up the words that Jesus taught us to use as we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever. Amen. Our reading for today is taken from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, beginning at verse 1 through to verse 14. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. And he led me around among them, and behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley, and behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones, and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live, and I will lay sinews upon you, and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a sound, and behold, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone, and I looked and beheld there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, 
and breathe on these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them. And they lived and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are indeed cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you into the land of Israel and raise you from your graves, O my people. And I will put my spirit within you and you shall live and I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken and I will do it, declares the Lord. And may God add his blessing to this reading of his holy word. Amen. This is a favourite passage of mine. I remember hearing it when I was younger, as I heard my dad preach about it. It's such a, a vivid image, and perhaps something that spurned me on to my own ministry, to think that words granted by God could put flesh and breath back on dry bones. Obviously this is a vision that Ezekiel is having. Ezekiel himself was a, a prophet and is thought to have lived after the fall of Jerusalem nearly 600 years before Christ was born. The people of Israel at the time were in exile, living with some limited freedoms but on the whole their existence has to be seen against a background of disaster and a crisis of faith. The Judeans had lost the land promised to their ancestors. They had been banished from it. The temple had been destroyed, the holy city sacked, and the soul of the people of Israel had withered on the vine. They recognised their plight. As we read at verse 11, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. The story is one of a, a valley of dry bones. If you can imagine it, it would be like something out of an Indiana Jones film, struggling through to a hidden valley covered with bones and skulls lying in chaos almost as far as the eye can see. It would be quite strange to look out on a landscape full of dry bones, in hot, arid sunshine, in eerie silence. There is nothing here to inspire the reader to imagine that God is going to do something remarkable. Ezekiel was both a prophet and a priest, so even though the bones are stripped and completely dried out, Ezekiel would have had a problem as there were all kinds of ritual rules that existed to prevent priests from going near human corpses. Even going into a valley like this would have been no small feat for him. These rules all existed to prevent the spread of disease and to keep priesthood pure spiritually. To break these rules would have been terrible for a priest. At present, we are all engaged in a form of cleanliness that would have been similar to that practiced by the priests of Ezekiel's day. And if it helps to compare the two, uh, so we can understand the weight of breaking the rules then as powerfully as we understand uh, the weight of breaking the rules now. The story itself, we can imagine, begins in silence, with Ezekiel being led into this valley. And it's only when words are spoken that things change. In response to the words of Ezekiel, the bones take on flesh and life. They rattle the bones. The bodies begin to breathe uh, and noise is heard through this valley, that of a great army. What we're being shown here 
is God's breath being given to those spiritually dead. It's an important symbolic moment. The name of God, Yahweh, is a word that's thought not to have a direct way of saying, but to be more like a, a sigh. When God chooses Abram and Sarah in the Old Testament, he grants them new names, Abraham and Sarah, adding the sound ah into their names as, as breath. This sense of being filled by the breath of God is about giving that life of deity, of eternal life. God's breath in his people, a breath to bring them back to life. The last verses are about God's prophecy to the people of Israel, about the great return, eventually from exile. God explains that these bones are the whole house of Israel, and the prophecy is made that the people will return to their lands. We heard in verse 14, I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. But what does this mean for you and for me today? Well, the breath that caused life in these dead bones is the breath that inhabits all creation, but also the breath that continues to breathe life into you and me. At this point in Lent, normally we would have reached a point of examination uh, that we might be sensing the condition of our souls, perhaps even noticing that there's a dryness about them, a, a hardness in our faith. Perhaps our souls have been stripped of the substance and are lacking life. I remember a time I visited a church and I was listening to the preacher and suddenly I, I started to cry and I, I couldn't work out what was causing it. As I cried, I had my own kind of vision, a picture that God gave to me of a well for drinking water, a great dark pit. And into that well was thrown a golden coin. And I, I watched the coin tumble down into the well. The light glinted off the coin and it illuminated the well all the way down to the bottom. The well was dry. I, I remember as I prayed through this image, getting the distinct sense that I was the well and that the coin was the good news of Jesus that I was hearing again in the preaching. And it was doing two things. Firstly, showing me how dry I had become and casting a light on my soul. And the second thing, it was telling me that I needed to be filled again from the source of water that never runs out. A timely reminder to me that I needed to return to God and receive again his grace, that faith that brings life. For the people of Judea, this passage from Ezekiel was the turning point that led them back to the promised land. They returned and, and they rebuilt. It's a story of restoration, of transformation. The bones turning into a living army, the exiles returning home, and all of it at the power of God. This is the, the transformation that God works in you and me as well. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says God, through the prophet Zechariah. For us as as Christians, there's always this temptation to face things in our own strength and power, but it's meant to be by God's Spirit. At the moment, with all that's going on with the coronavirus, the temptation is to face it in our own strength, when what we need is God's Spirit, his renewing power to keep us going. Many of the images of God in the Bible refer to God being to us like water in the desert, life instead of death. For those of you listening this morning, that life, that water, is available through Jesus Christ. My hope for you 
is that as you pray, as you worship today, that you would ask for God again to fill you with that water, to give you all the strength and peace and joy that you need over these days and weeks. So let us pray as we ask for God to work in us and also to work in the world today. Let's pray. We thank you for all your gifts, loving God, source of every good thing. We praise you for your mercies, new every morning and renewed in the evening. We thank you for bringing us together as your people, inspiring us through your spirit and giving us ears to hear the words of the prophets and voices to carry the message of your continuing presence with us. We thank you for people around us, caring, inspiring and challenging. May we rejoice in their example as we follow you more closely. For your love, that persistent reminder that you will not let us go. Your people, flesh and bone, the body of Christ, we praise you and give you thanks. We remember too all those in that great cloud of witnesses, those who've gone before us in the faith, those who've spoken your word and lived your love, that we may know you. Those we've known personally, our family and friends, no longer present here with us, in your company. And those too that we've not known, whose lives and words inspire us now. We are in your presence, Lord, knowing that without you we can do nothing. Without the breath of God we are dry bones. We ask that in this time of Lent your life-giving breath would blow through this world. We recognise that all is not as you intended. And so we offer our prayers for our church, our world and its people. We pray for your church that it may experience the new life which you offer through your Holy Spirit. That it may become a welcoming and challenging place, witnessing to God's love. We pray for our world, that people who suddenly find themselves in unexpected places may receive your peace and your hope. We pray for places afflicted by climate change, places of dryness where forest and fire threaten life and limb, where floods mean people eke out a fragile existence. For those who've lost everything and find themselves suddenly homeless or stateless. We remember those who wait for medical results, for news about jobs or benefits, those who struggle in the long watches of the night. We pray for those who are ill at home or in hospital and those who care for them. Family members, friends, care assistants, nurses and doctors. We pray for those who are in mourning, remembering the loss of someone close, suddenly reminded by everyday incidents of someone who's no longer there. We take a moment to pause and offer to you our prayers for those whom we love and who are in need of your peace. O oh, living God, as we approach Easter, breathe new life into your people as we journey towards Jerusalem knowing your presence leading guiding and challenging us and we pray all this in and through the love of Jesus Christ our Lord Amen we're going to sing again or if you'd like take the time to listen to the words and use them in your own prayers and your own thinking Between us, how high. 
Jesus 
now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Saviour, be glory and majesty, dominion and power. And may that blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, rest and remain with you and those whom you love, both now and forevermore. And all God's people said, Amen.